So, um, yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to talk about warm ups and conditioning. I don't know if Mark filled you in at all, but um, I yes, know, yes, I, yeah, I know you guys did do uh, did play together uh, back in the day, so that's awesome to hear. Um, Mark, any other intro points you wanna you wanna say? <laughs> Just a great guy, man. Basketball mind. Um, I was really proud of him. I seen him in Atlanta, man. He's training kids now, man. Love the drills that he's doing. Um, training older kids, younger kids. Uh, they just don't know how lucky they are to have this guy training, you know, because he, he, he has a great basketball mind. Uh, played against him in college. Played with him in the pros. Uh, felt like he should have been a pro, you know. But, you know, you know, opportunities, you know, just 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 it just be like that sometimes. But, uh, look, happy to have him on. Really good friend of mine. Um, you know, all my good friends, we don't talk every day, but when we talk, right. it's like we talk every day. So, you know, we know how our friendship is, and uh, I'm just happy to have him on to be a part of Sports Ed TV. He's also a contributor, and uh, I think this interview will help a lot of kids out when it comes to warming up and taking warm up serious. Yeah, exactly. So, Abdul, why don't you just give us a little bit of background about what you do? Well, I've uh, been fortunate enough to uh... – you know, be a partner in a facility that really caters towards youth athletic training uh, as early as age eight and some of collegiate athletes and even some pros come home uh, during the off season. But just an opportunity, one, to give back, uh, you know, share the basketball knowledge that's been, you know, given to me from coaches, from friends, from players. And it's just been a blessing to to be able to, to do that. So, um, and you know, just just be around the youth and, and the, the giddiness and their laughter and the TikToks and all that stuff. Just to me, keeps me very young. <laughs> That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah. So yeah, we did bring you in to talk about the topic of warm ups, conditioning, and mm-hmm. strength play. Yeah, strength and conditioning. Um, it plays in uh, to that to this conversation. Um, but there is kind of like a a, a mindset that we want to touch on that kind of keeps. Um, that will play into just, you know, mm-hmm. how to attack your warm ups, how to attack your conditioning, um, and what plays into that. So, the first question I wanted to ask you, though, uh, is does the importance of warm ups and conditioning change with age? You know, let's say you have a group of beginners, and, you know, just because of their, maybe more scientifically, their body type, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. You know, is it more important? Um, yeah, is it a balance of importance throughout your throughout your entire playing career, starting as young as eight, possibly? I, I think one of the key components is myofascial release, foam rolling. I uh, didn't really get exposed to that when I was a collegiate athlete, and the importance of it to one be preventative maintenance, just to and also get rid of inflammation, any soreness. So to me, from eight to 45, 50, that should be one of your core things you do first before you actually warm up. Is myofascial release getting any rid of any soreness, any aches, any pains? And then again, I wasn't exposed to what a dynamic warm up consists of. One to warm up your muscles and also to last, you know, any of your ligaments, your joints. And those two components are probably the first two things I always focus on, no matter what age I have. Now, obviously, your younger kids, when you get into more explosive movements and uh, quickness, it's going to change with just that athlete being to me more, uh, I would say, condition and just more explosive as, as they get older, I would say. So, yeah, we're going to jump around here. I do. I, don't, sure. I just have a few couple of questions, but you touched on, you know, uh, myofascial release and um, what was the other thing? What, the two components that you said. Um, a dynamic warm up. Right. The dynamic warm up. So what has changed? You know, how has fitness been implemented into a basketball strength and conditioning curriculum? Um, what has changed since you were a player? You know, what what are you guys bringing to the table that what else are you bringing to the table that you didn't necessarily have? Um, that's, you know, that that's such a big of a, a, a very big importance at um, at a current basketball. Athlete. It's funny. I, I remember strength training. You always thought of football players and. You know, basketball players didn't want to lift weights. We were always told it would mess with your shot. And I think all those things have definitely changed uh, the implement of yoga and just flexibility in, in athletes, I think, has been more heightened or been a sense of that's something that can long date your career. And I think just the points of strength training from joint stability to, 
you know, we're wondering why we're, we're, we're twisting our ankles and rolling our knees, you know, our hips aren't working and, and, you know, IT bands and mini bands and all these elements. I didn't, I wasn't exposed to when I, when I came up and now just seeing how you can, can really take that and mold the athlete to be the best they can is, is an ideal world. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk about, uh, how you explain to your athletes, how important, uh, warm ups and conditioning is when you're focusing on that. I know it can be very hard for a lot of kids to potentially, you know, uh, lose focus when they don't have the ball in their hands, um, just not take those aspects seriously. So what, what are the key things that you tell them, um, to communicate that importance? Well, it's funny. The first thing they want to do is grab the ball, <laughs> shoot a three or go right into you know, I want to dunk. I was like, but you haven't really warmed up your body. We haven't really done the thing that's going to allow you to perform at a high level. So just a constant conversation, sometimes, you know, showing them videos or giving them, you know, firsthand, uh, I would say, uh, examples of the difference in how it can elongate the career or make them more explosive. I think it's just a constant education. And, you know, sometimes they're a little hard headed and don't want to listen. And, you know, sometimes, as a coach, you just have to sometimes be a little more aggressive and say this. And what I'm doing is trying to help you and make you a better athlete. But to me, it's just a constant conversation and educating them on the importance. But that one kid who comes in, the first thing he does is grab the ball and go to full speed. I was like, no, my man, no. This is a different ways of training. And what are some hope that of, answers your question. Yes. Yeah. And what are some of the most common injuries that you're seeing in athletes, you know, when they don't warm up properly? Uh, you know, Achilles can be a major one. Uh, ACL, you know, twisting the ankle can be one that's just a chronic issue. And you, you don't really understand why. And you think your your ankles are weak, but maybe your hips aren't working. Maybe you're overcompensating on the right side, creating an imbalance. And when you speak this language to them, they're like, they're in the headlights. Like, what do you mean? Like, no one's ever explained that to a young athlete. You know, the importance of walking in the house barefooted to create, you know, ankle stability. Them things are... It's unheard of for, for some of them to uh, be told that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you were to prompt a coach to um, begin implementing a like a, just even a small program um, mm-hmm. into their into their daily practices or weekly practices, what were what were what are some of the key points that you would um, tell them not to make? You you may laugh. <laughs> But my, if I was in the position, the first thing I would implement to me would be yoga. Mm. No, I'm not the laughing. Mind and, That's my the mind and body strength to help these young athletes focus, uh, the stillness, the understanding how strong the mind is to help you before games to, to envision success. That I got maybe my last three years of being a professional. Had I got that early, I think I would excel. You know, you think you put on some music, you bob your head and you're ready to play and you're ready to perform. It's so much more. So, you know, to speak to the heart, yoga will be the first thing. Not even shooting, not even lifting weights. Just the stillness of the mind and body and understanding the two and how it can help you become the best athlete, best person, I think would be the first thing I implement. And I don't even know Mark, even though I was going to throw that at him, but that would be my number one, Jackie. I agree. Um, <laughs> right there with you. I am huge on yoga. If I had it, you know, during my playing career, if I had even the mental parts of it, it'd be a game changer. Yes. And you know, when yes. I'm watching, when I'm watching March Madness and the games coming down to the wire, and the team that it, the higher seed, you know, they're dunking and they're, you know, making crazy ah oh, sounds, but the underdogs are scoring the baskets, and then they're straight faced on, you know, ready for the next play to play. Yes. And, Yes. And, you know, who is calmer in that moment is something that I'm paying attention to a lot right now. Um, And you're just kind of seeing how it plays out. You can kind of keep their emotions straightforward and and get the job done. Um, But that's, you know, the way that might have been previously communicated in basketball isn't necessarily the most mindful of approaches, especially with kids. No. No. And then then some of the some of the coaches is not to say that they're not great coaches, but some of them weren't basketball players or sometimes that has to be a connection. Mm-hmm. You understand when to push, when to pull with some of these young athletes. And when you've experienced that as a player, sometimes those conversations or those mindfulness is e- easier. And not to say that you, you know, all the great coaches weren't basketball players or athletes, but 
that is to me uh, uh, a synchrony, a synergy that that can help a, a young athlete. Right, and you're obviously teaching. You know, the the overall goal is to have the athlete kind of appreciate the warm up as as part of the entire experience, right? But you know, how are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to appreciate it kind of separate from basketball, like yoga has taught me and you. Um, but what are the you know, uh, you know, what are the mindset and what's the mindset these kids should be having during this time? Um, and how are you, you know, how are you teaching that? How are you implementing that? Uh, I'm, well, we, we, I'm fortunate enough to have a turf and sometimes I'll, I'll make it fun, but mm-hmm. the speed and agility and the explosives change of direction to help them understand that that translates to on the court. Sometimes they always think they have to have the ball in their hand for it to actually translate to what they're doing on the court. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I have a turf and I have med balls and I have bands and I have Vertimax kind of eases them into it where it's a fun environment and it's different and then try to educate them on cross training. I didn't really know about cross training. Everything was basketball, but now, you know, I go take a CrossFit class, go take an orange theory class just to get that endurance, that conditioning that would eventually translate to your particular sport. Yeah. I guess we could talk about, we can, you know, uh, transfer the conversation to conditioning. Um, (laughs) I guess, you know, with, uh, you know, with it, does it does does the conditioning workouts vary that you have when you have an eighteen an eighteen year old in the gym versus an eight year old, or are they all kind of lined up on the baseline together? Yeah, no. Well, you know, obviously the VO two the VO two two max and the consumer of oxygen is definitely different with younger and older athletes. Uh, I, I think one of the key ingredients now that I think some collegiate athletes are being exposed to is heart rate interval training. You know, wearing a heart rate monitor and be able to see your heart rate in real time and understand the difference between a aerobic threshold and an anaerobic threshold. You know, I wasn't exposed to that. I just, you were breathing hard. You knew you would something you was doing, but now someone puts a definition to a definition to it. Like oh, that's an anaerobic threshold. And that's what is needed in basketball because it's stop and go. So just trying to educate them on that and, and help them experience the difference between, you know, a four minute run and then a one minute burst of energy, then pause and hit it again. Just trying to give those components to them and help them see the difference and how it can all play into to, right. to basketball. It seems like there's like a very scientific approach. So how, you know, how responsive are they to that? Um, yeah. I, I still think they always get mad when you tell them, get on the baseline. We all know, we all know what that means. But it, it's something that's always needed. Uh, I tend to, to maybe try to do it in the middle of my workout and experience them shooting when they're tired. And then always at the end, try to end with a little more conditioning just to kind of understand that that's how you should feel. Like you shouldn't be walking out of these workouts, not wind- winded and not feel like you gave me a hundred percent. And if I don't see no sweat on your shirt, then I'm just looking at you like maybe I didn't work you hard enough and just trying to understand the different athletes and who to push, who to pull. But, you know, at some point you're always getting on the baseline. That just to me is one of the key ingredients <laughs> of coming up, I guess. Yeah. And has the approach and conditioning changed as science has evolved throughout the years? Or is it still, yeah, the heart, like, if you're bent over, can't breathe, you know, you're, you've, you've done enough. Or is there, has it changed? You know, is it, you know, yeah. Well, I, I don't think it's so much. You know, you always hear the defense wins games or the team with the best conditioning is going to really pull through in the fourth quarter. Uh, and I, maybe my coach was ahead of the game. We did all our conditioning in the pool. Mm. So the fact that the water can help strengthen the muscles, prevent injury, and we looked at him like he was crazy. But who knew that that's something that, if you look at now, is a, is a major play in, in athletes is, you know, training in the water. And I was blown away as I got older and understood his mindset and how important that was. So I think it's evolved. And people are, you know, thinking outside the box and, and, and how they're training young athletes, but I always hated that, you know, that 5 a.m., you know, mile run or five mile run, but I don't think that's what our sport is. It's it's very anaerobic, very anaerobic. That definitely helps answer the question. I guess, you know, how I was saying, um, you know, maybe back in the day, strength and conditioning for us, I know for me, it looked a lot like just load, 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 get stronger, get stronger. There's more of like a fitness approach where you're, you know, more functional strength is important. Um, So, yeah, so 
I guess, in addition to the pool, are there any other ways other than getting on the baseline that coaches today are getting that conditioning aspect done, or is it still? No, I would say, you know, you nailed it. Functional movement, isometric, you know, single leg bounding, you know, hops, uh, box jumps works. I think all those are a key ingredient now that I don't think I had back or was exposed to back then. Maybe different programs had, you know, different people of knowledge that had that. But, you know, just the plyometric and, you know, the isolation of single leg bounding just to me is it's what, what we do. It's what we do now. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, what, what you got? Is there a certain level of intensity that you have with different age groups? Like, you know, I know when we was coming up, it wasn't no intensity. It was like, <laughs> you go run, just like pros run. But is it now, since it's different, man, and, you know, you're dealing with parents and kids are a little softer. You can say that now <laughs> than when we were. So is it a different intensity level that you use with different age groups? It's funny. I, I had an AAU team, and, uh, you know, I had the pleasure of uh, Malik Hightower, who was one of the coaches who assisted me with it. In the first week, Mark, I didn't yeah. really speak because I couldn't figure out how to say, what to say, when to say it, because it was a different yeah. mentality. Yeah. And then finally one day when I spoke, they was like, oh, we didn't know he even had that because I had to pour into him because I was like, yo, I wasn't the talented kid. So your okay. work ethic, your intensity, the way you're approaching this game, I can't relate to. And it took yeah. me a week to, to, to yeah. figure out when to speak and let yeah. him understand that, yo, this is some BS effort you're giving me. And you're yeah. at a top-notch facility like this? So yeah. learning the athlete, I think, is – that we have to make as being older. I don't think it's our way or the highway. I yeah. just learning this generation and figuring out what buttons to push to help them understand the importance, I think is, is on us, is on us. And some of these AAO coaches may not think that way, but I've got to figure out how to get the best out of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah man, and the two things, man, helped me get to the league. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, the head scout for the Heat was going to leave a, a USBL game that I was playing in Atlanta. And wow. he said he was getting ready to leave out the door until he saw me come out. And I was the only player that was running when I make a layup or go get a rebound in a two-line yeah. layup. I was the only one sprinting to half court. And he saw me do that four times, and he turned around and got it, came back and sat and watched the whole game. And that was that, and and I made the Heat team because I was in better shape than everybody. I went there on a one-day trial, and right. I went with Chris King and Ryan Lothridge. Oh, and wow. We went, yeah, we went, and I was the only one in shape. And I'm still here in Miami, man. So, you know, I'm glad we're having this conversation because those are the two components that got me to the league. I, I came out and took layups and warm up seriously. Seriously? Yes. yes. And I also made sure I stayed in shape. And so when I go to a trial, I want to be the guy that's, that they look at and be like, okay, he's been working because he, he's yes. in shape. So yes. those, key, those and, points are very, very important. To piggyback being in shape and just to me taking warm up seriously, like I'm watching them warm up and they doing, you know, flips. I was like, yo, you're not going to do that in a game. And then uh -huh. you don't know who's watching. Yep. And you remember the whole saying, you know, practice practice makes you better. But to me, it's a better, it's, it's, it's changed. Better practice makes yep. you a better player. And yep. trying to help them understand the importance of just when you're doing your layups and your warm-ups, go game speed, but take it serious. This whole flipping around and they weren't trying to do the Kyrie, like, well, I was back there trying to play. I ain't got no hair, and I was pulling my hair off. Jackie, I ain't got no hair. I, was, I worked in the high school basketball space for years, and, yeah, warm-ups were, like, atrocious to watch. Because I'm oh, like, at, at first, because someone's going to get hurt, you know? Yep. Missing a dunk, you know, not seeing another ball flying in and not being warm, especially. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, incredible. Yeah. Incredible. But uh, that's all I got. I love the points that we touched on today. It's definitely where I wanted this conversation to go. Um, functional strength is like, I, yeah, I can't believe I played basketball and was able to like bench 100 on the bench, but couldn't do a push up. So, yeah, that's it. it's, it's different. Yeah. yeah, it's different. Uh, it's definitely different. Uh, what position did you play, Jack? I didn't mean to change the conversation. I was a power forward. You know, I'm, okay, I'm, that's good. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that. You know, they wanted me to be like this, this beefy, you know, big that I was never going to be. Um, right, right. I got pretty strong, but, you know, I've been doing yoga for the past five, six, seven years now. And, you oh. know, it's like, and the way my body has like stretched out 
Yes. Um, yes. My back, my lower back, like had yeah. a very, very bad tilt. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just disappeared. And there's just, yeah, I just, for the, for bodies like us, especially when we're made, when we're just told to load strength. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. It was, you know, I have no pain and I, yeah, it's yeah. game changer. Mm. Okay. Well, Mark, man, thoughts, kudos, man. man. No, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity, man, to still yeah. be a part in whatever it is you do. Sometimes, you know, your friendships, you don't know until you get older and you realize the importance yeah. of true people in your life, whether you yeah. succeed or fail. Yeah. And like you said, at the drop of a dime, you make a call. And it's like we pick up where we left off. So I salute yeah. you and I appreciate for being anything you're involved with, my man. Yeah, thanks, man. Same here, man. Proud of you. I uh, like the work that you're doing. Uh, definitely gonna have you on on some more topics, man. Because um, that's sir. You know, full about it. Uh, we're doing the same thing, just trying to give back, man. Just trying to give back, even the playing field. Everybody can afford a four or five hundred dollar a week trainer, man. So nice. We're trying to give them an avenue, a free avenue, man, where they have that same. They can get that same type of training through Sports Ed TV. So, yeah, man, we're Wonderful. gonna start doing some camps and clinics, man. Hopefully, you can be a part of that too. And, uh, you know, we'll keep it going, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Abdul. Bye. All right. All right. All right.